So today we're talking about changing the clutch on Audi Coupe, Audi 4000. And to begin with, you're gonna need wrenches, sockets, um, sizes 19 and 17, because the bolts around the transmission bell housing uh, take 19, and a lot of the other ones take 17. For example, the I think the bolts uh, of the starter take 17. I have never done it, so Mechanical Pete will be doing a lot of help for me and teaching me how to do it. You are gonna see us take off the wheels on the of the car. That's because of its size. Um, the car is somewhat small, so the wheels would sooner or later would be on our way. And you definitely do <laughs> you definitely do need to take off or disconnect the battery for this one. Just do it. <laughs> You don't like sparks? I don't like sparks. What about fireworks? No. Come on, this is America. Well, yeah, but... Do you like fireworks if they're inside your car? <laughs> or under your car? Mm. Sounds pretty awesome. First thing, remove the battery. Just do it. <laughs> Then the starter comes off. This is the magic wire that makes sparks. Let's put the shit back on so we don't lose it. The starter might be stuck on there, so you'll see Mechanical Pete hammering it. The paint is coming off just like this. Alright, cool, yo. Two bolts from the starter. So this is the part that you're starting to see. It spins inside the transmission. And then lower, please. This has to come off, this is where the pressure plate is and everything that connects to it, like axles and anything else. This is my AC. Mm -hmm. How do I make the tractor work? So the exhaust bolts, guys, I mean, just be prepared that they're gonna break off. If they're like this, and on yours, they probably are, because all of these cars are same age, so they are gonna break off. Or, well, we're going to try to not have them break off, so we're going to grease them up right now with this stuff. The axles aren't actually removed, you just attach them. Stretch the axles by taking out these bolts. That's what it looks like. You can see it's attached to the transmission. Next. Good. 
Japanese cars you have to get it off from this side they take the control arm off so you can get get it out and you have to pull it out of transmission it's just sitting inside <gasps> it's not screwed in because this is screwed what? onto a cap you see on this part yeah this is what spins it's screwed onto here yeah but in Japanese car the, the axle goes right into the transmission it doesn't have this connection point over here so you cannot take them off why wouldn't you have it screwed on? Less parts. Hmm. Why would they produce more parts? Now we have to undo all the screws and bolt goes around the bell housing. It's actually holding them to the engine. Mm -hmm. uh, leaving top two on so the transmission doesn't fall out, fall out by itself and you're not ready for it. So remove the rest of them, leave the back two on and yeah and then no, no, that's gonna, that's gonna go from there. Before you take the transmission out, you need to remove the bottom clutch cylinder. That's the cylinder that's inside, under the hood, that's down there. Alright, so after the bottom clutch cylinder and everything else is out, after all the screws um, that we did from underneath the car are out. I'm unscrewing the two last, the two last screws on the transmission, the ones that are on the top. Um, kind of over there, and one next to it. goes to the to the last of the top bolts that's a big ground just like Pete said alternator plus this wire minus You're gonna see us use a bucket to prop the transmission. That's because we cannot wait to go viral on YouTube. Other people should use a specialized automotive tripod to prop things like that. Oh, tiny cars began in stupid combination. Hate it. Oh my god, I hate it. Such a cool car, but so not cool to work on it. On cigar. We will be already putting them back together. So in order to remove the transmission, you need to pull it off the engine. And it so happens that in Audi Coupe, it's trapped in there by the steering column. In order to remove it, we lowered the subframe. So the engine is mounted on the subframe and if you loosen it, it tilts and then you can detach the gearbox from it. It's not usually a problem on larger cars, but on small ones where everything's crammed together, obviously it is. So that's what we did. You're going to find two bolts in the front of the subframe and two in the rear, and uh, you Basically, we didn't do it because we're savage, but you definitely should secure the engine with one of those automotive uh, engine support bars first, uh, and then you can loosen, you can take off the two rear bolts of the subframe and loosen, but not completely remove the two front ones. That's how we did it. Ah. 
sharpness to this piece, this piece is moving the pressure plate. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that a little bit later. You yeah, know. This thing is sh The bearing? Yeah. Here, all dry inside. Yep. No wonder it wasn't working like at all. And see, it's also worn out. You can see like this shiny strip on it. Yeah. It's been worn out over there. So it's supposed to have no sound. And this is the old one. This is what it sounds like. Old bearing, new bearing. Right. So new bearing came in the kit. This is the rest of the kit. This is to set it in there. See how it works? As soon as you loosen these screws up, these things lift up. So that means that it's inside like spring mechanism. So when you press on against these, I don't know what to call them. When you press against these, it lo loosen. Teeth. Yeah, it loosens up the clutch. That's how you. That's that's why you can shift gears and the engine is not connected to the box anymore. Then see, see what can happen. Mm -hmm. This is the same brand. It's just the difference between new and old. I mean, this one is not that bad. It's very, very bad when it's already like touching these uh, rivets. This one you have all kind of noises and everything, but car usually still drives. Now it's heating up. It gets overheated because when you slide the clutch, when you rev it up to like 5000 RPMs and super slowly re releasing it. Like, and then you're slowly releasing it and it's like just spins. If you release it super slowly, it just slides very, 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 very fast and heats up everything. It heats up this piece, it heats up everything with this, and so this one is new, and in this one you see the metal has been become, became red, like, you know, the blue stuff. Yeah, burned. Yeah, so you see, and also these are the burn marks. You see the, these things? Mm -hmm. This is from overheating, that's, that's how they are produced. This one looks much nicer. You have to degrease it before you put it on. But so is this the problem though? I frankly don't know. Yeah, these don't look like it doesn't look horrible, bad. It doesn't yeah. doesn't look that bad, it's still drivable. But this one is, this one's definitely been burned. You know why? Mm. Because on this one, it's smooth, and this one you even have like an edge already. Mm -hmm. So maybe what happened, maybe they they did not change this one, just the disc itself. Oh. They left the old one. Because this one doesn't look like it's been changed. It doesn't look new. Not at all. Not yeah. at all. There's another bearing we have to change inside by the engine before we install it. And another small grease for it. The job is to get this one, the old one, out of the car right now. This is the bearing. The whole thing, like this is the side of it. This whole metal thing. Um, one way to do it is just to destroy it. Just to hammer it stick stuff at it and hammer and do whatever you can do with it because you won't be able to damage the engine. This is not the perfect way to do it but it's a way to do it if you don't have uh, one of the slide hammers like the one we're using in the video. Putting the new one in. 
find the socket that matches the bearing, put it over the bearing and hammer it in. Just gently. Right, so the groove in there and the flat part need to be degreased because just like in the brakes nothing can be greasy here it needs to not slide and uh, in factories they coat stuff with some kind of grease a little bit so it doesn't rust wherever it sits in the warehouse so take some something to degrease those so guys Pete is installing the new clutch. Now it's very important to use this tool. This is a calibration tool that comes in a kit with the new clutch. So you see the clutch inside, it's a tiny bit smaller, mm -hmm. say eight or eight of an inch smaller. Mm -hmm. So if you do not align it in, 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 in the very center, it's going to be impossible to slide the center shaft of the gearbox through the clutch and into that bearing. If it's not yep. going to be aligned, you won't be able to do it. So that would make you to take off the gearbox twice. So that's why you use this tool. If you do not have a tool like this, you can find a bolt or something that's this diameter and it's still doable. You can kind of fit it inside. Find you can feel the bearing inside, find the center, and then you can visually just look around and make it so it sits in the center. And then you tighten up all the bolts around it and it should stay there. Is that. You stick your hand head in it. Make sure that it, that it is right in the center, actually. Okay. After we slept, it was time to put the transmission back in with no tools except for our beautiful bare hands. And well, so without any lift, we weren't able to get the transmission back in. So we're going to take apart the steering mechanism so it's not in the way because the top lip of the transmission keeps hitting it and it's very hard to get it past it and attached to the engine over here. So it's now time to put everything together in reverse order. We filmed some of the details of, reassembling, of the reassembling process, but overall just don't put stuff where it doesn't go. One very important tip, do use a torque wrench when tightening all the different bolts. You're not going to see Mechanical Pete do it because he's been doing it for over 65 years by now and a wrench is a torque wrench in his hands. But refer to your owner's manual. I'll see if I can source one for you and put it in the description below. Um, and uh, yeah, see, see how much torque you need, how tight each of the bolts needs to be. As a hole, it has this bolt and it has to match the hole. So you have to align it first, so it's right in the center. this you can screw it in or lose the bolt <laughs>
to let us know what kind of work you'd like to see us do on Audi Coupe, Audi 4000 and subscribe to see when that video gets released. I am Mechanical Pete and I approve this message.